G'day everyone, welcome to Lubrication Explained. Today we're going to talk about seal swell, and you'll probably already know that lubricants and elastomers kind of react with each other chemically. We're going to explore that in a little bit of detail because what you've been told is probably at a reasonably surface level, and it's actually quite a complex interaction. I'm by no means an expert, but let's try and discover this together. Let's get into it. <music> So let's talk about seal swell. You'll probably already be familiar with the fact that if I have some kind of O-ring and let's say it's around a shaft, I want a little bit of seal swell, right? I think intuitively that makes sense because we want it to swell up a little bit to help with the kind of interference fit and that is going to help the integrity of the seal. If it swells too much, that could result in some kind of breakage, right? And that's going to compromise the integrity of that seal all the, way, all the way around the shaft. Likewise, we don't want shrinkage, right? So PAOs are renowned for shrinking seals in the same way that esters are renowned for swelling seals. These are probably rules of thumb that you might have heard of in the past. And this goes back to the old days of engine oils when originally there were some 100% ester formulations and they were known for excessive seal swell. But are these two statements true? And are they true in all cases? Because the reality is a little bit more complex than these two quotations would have you suggest. So, going back to our fundamental electrical forces, these are the intermolecular forces, remember. We've got ion, ion, ion dipole, hydrogen, dipole, dipole, and London dispersion forces. And depending on the type of molecule, the bond strength goes down as we go down this list. Now, for very simple uh, solutions like salt in water, it's very easy to predict the behavior, right? So uh, water, for example, and salt, we know that water forms hydrogen bonds and salt forms ionic bonds, therefore, you know, in that like dissolved like, ionic and hydrogen are of similar strength and therefore salt dissolves in water. But when we're trying to predict the behavior of seal materials in oil, it's quite different because the seal material, well, what kind of bonds does it form? That's a bit unknown. What kind of bonds does the oil form? Well, that's also unknown. And the reason why it's unknown is because we know for a fact that oil can form all sorts of different bonds depending on the base oil type, right? So we've talked about this before, that PAGs, for example, form hydrogen bonds. Esters generally form some hydrogen bonds, but not as many as PAGs. And as you go down the list towards PAOs, PAOs only have London dispersion forces because they are just so nonpolar. Well, we also have the same thing for seal materials. I mean, Viton, Teflon, EPDM, silicon, NBR, these are all very, very different types of materials and their polarity varies greatly. Now, I'm not a seal specialist. There's probably a whole nother channel that needs to be on, you know, seal materials explained or something like that. But the reality is that there are some very complex chemistries that go into making seal materials and therefore the bonds that they form they're just as variable as the base oils. Now, we can have some general rules of thumb based on polarity. Remember, uh, polarity helps us understand whether like dissolves like. And based on these rules, we can kind of give some, you know, traffic lights to this. The one on the right is uh, PFPE, by the way. However, even this isn't a complete picture because... In addition to the seal material and the oils, we also have the interaction of the oil additives and the seal additives as well. So seals are a little bit like oils in, in the fact that they have additives as well as base materials in them. And the interaction of the oil additives, the base oil, the seal base, and the seal additives is a very complex one. And it's very difficult to predict exactly what the behavior is going to be. Now, layer on top of this, geometry. So, what do I mean by geometry? Well, you can think of a seal in some ways as being like uh, 
it's kind of got a matrix to it. And for want of a better word, I'm really, really simplifying this. And uh, people who are SEAL specialists uh, are probably going to disagree with me greatly. But for want of a better word, it's almost like uh, a physical filter, right? So it has this kind of mesh matrix and within it is the base material as well as the additives. Now, if I have a base oil off on the left, um, from a chemical perspective, maybe like dissolves like, and let's say for example, here I have a paraffin molecule and it wants to adsorb into the seal material. Well, if it looks like this and it's a straight chain paraffin, maybe it's able to just pass straight through. On the other hand, maybe it's an alkene, right? It has a double bond in it, so it's non-saturated, and we know that some double bonds bend the molecule. Well, now it's not so easy for it to get through that seal matrix, right? So even the geometry of molecules can play a role in whether they are able to interact with seal materials and swell them or not. Now, likewise, if our, um, if our lubricant molecule grows in size, Right, so here I'm showing a, a triglyceride. The size of this molecule makes it unable to penetrate that seal matrix. And so um, if you'll remember from the estalides interview, uh, Dr. C uh, Creek had mentioned that they are actually creating esters which are so large that they are unable to penetrate the seal matrix. And if anything, they, these esters actually cause seal shrinkage because they draw uh, material out of the seal into the base oil. So we can see that um, just saying that esters uh, swell seals and PAOs shrink seals is a general rule of thumb, but it's so much more complex than that. So the reality is we need to do actual physical testing. Now, generally, this will have already been done by the OEMs, right? They're going to specify the seal material and they'll specify the types of lubricants that can be used in the application. So generally, most of the work is already done for us. However, it is important to understand that you can't just go changing everything be without having done the testing first. All right, I hope that's a, a helpful explanation for the chemistry of seals as well as uh, base oils. I realized that that was a very simplified version and that there are experts out there who will probably tear this explanation to pieces, but uh, I think it's a good kind of starter. All right, uh, this has been Lubrication Explained.